tuning in. So I'm in Jacques Cartier National Park in Quebec, going winter camping. You saw all the gear that we got. I got my canvas tent and my wood stove, so it'll be super comfortable with my father-in-law here. Just a Christmas holiday, um, you know, activity to go out in the, the woods and uh, camp. So we're just arriving at our spot. It's only like a three kilometer hike for this spot. And uh, so we'll have to cross this bridge and then we're camping right in the back and there, I'll show you in a minute. So, this is the map where we are. You can see Sotoriski and the Jacques Cartier rivers met there. We're at the star, camping right about in here. And then tomorrow, um, we wanna go see some viewpoints on the top of the, the mountain, which is actually the mountain that's right there. So we'll take a hiking trail, go around, go up and then show you that viewpoint. Love this park. It's got lots of uh, nice country. Nice river. All right, let's go uh, set up the tent with the wood stove. While uh, he's uh, digging to put the tent, because it's a heated tent, we want to take some of the snow out so that when it, the snow melts, we get less water. While Claude is uh, digging, we we'll start unpacking the sled with with the stuff. Got my good old. Alaskan wood stove. Nyko Alaskan wood stove. With the legs. And got my tent and all my stuff in this bag. Food bag for the the overnighter. This is the tent right here. At the spark arrestor. Oh, it's perfect. So. Sorry, you guys might hear us speak French. We speak French between each other, so. Okay, so this is the Kanguk model from Atec Tents. So it's got five sides. So we got the main 
stakes in, the five stakes. And I bought this sweet MSR pole, which is uh, aluminum and it packs pretty good in three. It's just a tarp, a tarp pole. And it works perfect for this tent. This tent is a 10 by 10. Last year I had to cut down a tree. Um, but now with this, it works good to put in the middle of the tent. And then it's it's adjustable too with the the holes here. So if my stakes are too wide or not wide enough, I can bring the height of the tent up or down. Well, this is what it looks like so far. We're gonna tap the snow with the snowshoes, then put the snow pikes in, and this just comes out and tightens up the walls of the tent. These are the snow sn snow stakes. They're designed very differently. The other ones were uh, like ice fishing uh, shelter screws. So they'll go good in ice. But these ones are really designed for snow so they go in easy but then once everything freezes this ice is up and it's really solid. Um, but it works better in uh, snow that's uh, tapped, not like just loose snow like this. So I'll just walk around the tent here with my snowshoes and tap this out a little bit. This is quite a bit of work to set up just for one night, but it's super comfortable and it's just really fun to uh, test out our our gear and you know be outside so wish we could stay like for a whole week though I'll have to save up some time off at work at some point and do a, a actual week-long trip that would be awesome I'm gonna use uh, this branch instead of the uh, the the pegs we used all the pegs already didn't bring quite enough Show the quick knot. Two on the inside there. One outside. And then it's adjustable height. Just dig a quick hole, bury this log in here. Once this snow hardens, it'll be a very solid anchor that I can tighten up my tent by tightening this cord right here. Perfect. Trying to get it nice and vertical. So I get a lot of questions on this uh, tent and this stove on some of the previous videos. I just want to show what you got for room. So uh, you can, of course, you can have the stove set up 
in a different fashion if you want it kind of facing this way or facing that way but the chimney is kind of in front of the door so that's that now for how many people you could sleep in here you could sleep one there two three and you could even sleep four and then have your you don't have anybody on the side of the door but with three or what well, with four people you don't have any room for your gear so you want to have some room for your wood so if you stack your wood there you got one two three four people with some wood you're good but you got to put your gear outside with the with the tarp on it but we're only two so we got lots of room as you can see I am standing right now and I have to be like right in the middle of the tent if I'm standing but if I'm in the back you know the wall comes in at a slope but there is room to stand and I'm five feet uh, ten so there you go all set all the pegs are in chimneys in it's nice and high so I won't have any sparks or anything falling on there a little bit of snow falling nothing crazy let's get a small fire going Il y avait, j'ai vu tantôt la, la barbe à papa là, qui était accrochée par la barbe. Non, mais ça, ça va marcher. Ouais. Ouais. C'est tu ce qu'il y avait dans la tente? Ouais. Ok. Un peu plus fin. Ouais. Ouais. Ouais, puis je vais t'en essayer de venir jouer un peu. Ouais, puis les enlèvres à l'air. Ouais, puis les enlèvres à l'air. Ouais, puis les Ok. C'est bon. On va t'amener d'eau pour ça. Ouais. Je vais changer de coat. C'est un peu windy et nous ne marchons pas. Nous ne sommes pas vraiment actifs. Donc, j'ai toujours un coat plus thicker coat for uh, just a round can. <laughs> just setting up some, some water to boil outside on our fire. So I got my Morris bush pot. Gonna fill it up with some cleanish snow here. Throw that on there over the fire. And then I got this other MSR titanium pot, but it doesn't have uh, a handle to hang over the fire. But uh, my father in law, Claude, he uh, made this with snare wire and said he got the idea from uh, I think it's Lonnie from uh, Far North I think it's Far North Bushcraft and Survival channel I also learned that you can light a fire with the bow drill with Chaga from his from his channel that I tested out about two years ago and it worked so with this snare wire set up, you can hang it on, hang it on there. Well, just fill it up with some snow. This has kind of become a Christmas kind of tradition that we go out and do a bit of winter camping and it's a it's a good good family time perfect gonna build a quick 
pot hanger. Usually you'd use green wood, but oh well. Just finished my pot hanger notch. See it's almost dark out, the sun's going down. Gets dark really early. So uh, winter camping in Canada, that's why I always have my uh, headlamp right close and handy. I like to wear it around my neck all the time so that when it gets dark I don't get surprised. And got my light source. Sleeping bag. Water's boiling, we'll do a quick kind of tour of the camp so far. It's our bench right here for uh, just sitting by the fire. We'll use each of those bats to double up our sleeping mats. We got the tent over here. Gonna walk around. Goats, but ça va assez chaud. Je pense que ça va être trop chaud. Ça va être parfait. Ouais, ben, bien, quand on est habitué à des moins 30 et qu'il fait à peu près moins 10, c'est chaud. Yeah, I was asking Claude if he's gonna be warm enough, and he says, yeah, we're used to like minus 20, minus 25, 30, and it's only like minus 10 right now, minus 8 when we left, so. Really nice temperature, so this is the setup we got. So we got our wood coming in from the door, and then we got our uh, I'm sleeping over here right in front of the stove so I can load it up with wood. We got our gear in between us so we both have access to whatever we need, and uh, Claude is kind of on this side. He doesn't need access to the the wood or anything. And then he's closer to the door. But we'll have that closed up and we can close the bottom with a few logs. These ATIC tents, this one I have, mine's uh, cotton. It's 10 ounce cotton. But the bottom have some nylon. So you can kind of put that in the snow. And then like you see here, I've added snow all along the, the border of the wall, so I won't have any air coming in at all. The only place that could have air would be the, uh, the door there. And the vent, the vent hole, which is, is going to the back of the tent right now. The vent hole, which is on the back here of the tent. There, actually, I think I gotta open it up from inside. So, just kind of open it up. So, when we'll be heating later, it'll have good circulation of air. This is a quite a breathable material. It's cotton, so I mean, even if you'd leave it closed, you'd just be warm. So that is the tour of our campsite. 
always get teased that I don't know how to cook in camping, so I uh, not gonna really cook this time. We're just gonna have pre-made meals, easy and lightweight. All you have to do is add boiling water. So I need to carefully add two cups, 500 milliliters boiling water to the pouch. Claude, c'est comment la petite coupe, ça a 25? Ah oui, c'est ça. Fait qu'il faut mettre 4 cups pour 500, ouais. This is 125, so uh, we gotta add 4 cups in each, each of these bad boys. Oops. Let stand eight to nine minutes. Stir and enjoy right out of the pouch. Grab my uh, super spatula that I carved for a bushcraft challenge and been using it every morning actually to make eggs or whatever. This thing works really good. Here's a, another one of my carvings. I had to do a fork for the bushcraft challenge too, but mine was a little bit bigger, so I did this one after the fact. Pretty happy with this thing. Didn't try it yet, so we'll try it with rice and chicken. Do some BBG. Yeah, it's thick enough for the fork. Mmm. Mmm. C'est bon, ça? Ah, it's super bon. What? Careful the matters. No, no sparks. Je pense pas que je l'ai brûlé, non? Non, 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 c'est correct. J'ai pas pensé que c'était pour mon matelas. <rire> c'est mon plus beau matelas. <rire> ah ouais, est il est large puis il est, euh, il est long, il fait toute notre longueur. Mais c'est rare de traîner parce qu'il prenait plus de place qu'un truc que l'autre. 
Ouais, il est plus chaud. Mais il est vraiment, ouais, il est prêt. Ils sont chers, ces mots aussi, de mettre le là. Ouais, ils donnent pas, hein. Non, non, non. On va pas mettre d'un frais. <rire> Hey, wow! Tabarnouche qu'on va être bien là! Veux-tu que je rentre les pots? Ça doit faire 10 minutes, ça mouille. Ouais, rentre là, ils vont. Ouais, ça fait 10 minutes. Ok. Ils vont continuer. Allez? Ah oh, oui! Let's go see what we got for temperature. Outside right now, it's not very cold. Minus. 6 but it's windy so yeah minus 6 so let's grab the thermometer and see what temperature we'll have inside the tent depends on the tent it always depends on the height of the tent uh, not the height but yeah like how high you are inside the tent because uh, Lower, lower to the ground. We'll stay probably around zero, like negative five, zero. Unless you have the the heating really going, then you'll go up like plus five, plus ten. Then higher up, about like waist level, you'll probably have like more, like plus ten, fifteen, twenty. And then if you go top of the tent, it'll probably be like plus. 30 plus 40 depending on how much wood you have in the stove so yeah but let's do some some testing so right here we have this thermometer which is shoulder height and we've got 18 degrees celsius it's about 60 fahrenheit at shoulder height which is very comfortable and you can see that the door is wide open and in my wood I'm not even yeah I only have like some small embers in there it's pretty much dead right now okay so we heated up the stove at 705 I'll show you what I got in there just for reference I guess you gotta open it slowly so I don't smoke out the, the tent I've got a couple logs, you know, it's burning, but it's not like crazy. I'm trying to maybe close the key a bit, block some oxygen, and it's comfortable. Like, it's probably around 20 when we're sitting around, but I'll show you. So I've got the uh, thermometer here, the top one, and I've got 35 degrees but of course we're not like standing all the time we're mostly sitting and then on this one which is a little bit lower we've got about 34 35 so I'll lower it put it um, about shoulder height or waist height where we're sitting and then that'll give us a general idea 7 almost 720 See what we got now. We still got top here. We've got still 35, 34. Now, like I said, I lowered this one, and it's a little bit farther from the stove. It's right on the other side of my uh, my sleeping pad, and I'm down at 17, 17.5. So there's a big difference. There's almost 15 degrees difference. From the top of the tent to about two three feet high now i'll just throw this kind of on the ground um i don't know right about over here and i mean see how much it is later Ah, ah oui. Ah, il y a de la belle braise. Il y a des petites flammes comme au fond. Ah, ta 
tabarnouche. Oui, oui, oui. Hey, parfait, ça. Okay, guys, so I did not tell you guys, but there's a secret feature <laughs> on this tent. <laughs> it's an in integrated beer fridge right underneath the tarp here. And I've got Lévisien IPA from Corsair Microbrewery, Microbrasserie Pirate. So that's what we're having. Tonight we got one for me and one for Claude. Yeah, she wanted to say thanks and uh, cheers to you guys. I just reached uh, 10,000 subscribers just recently, and uh, that's just amazing. I never thought there'd be 10,000 people watching my shenanigans outdoors. So. <laughs> Claude says we're gonna send you all one beer, but I don't have that kind of budget, unfortunately. So, <laughs> be awesome. But I am planning on doing a giveaway uh, soon. I'm just trying to find some sponsors or something, so I don't have to buy everything. But uh, I will be giving out something soon. So, cheers, guys. C'est le, mm. le plaisir d'une tente chauffée. Ça, c'est bon. Yeah. C'est bon, hein? Comment ça? Ben, tu on prend pas de bière. Mm. Voilà. Mais, je pense pas qu'on aurait pris une bière assis dehors yeah. au vent avec la neige. Non. Claude says it's the fun of having a heated tent. We can just kind of <laughs> hang out and chill. We're not like outside in the freezing cold and the wind and whatnot. We can kind of chill and then we know that you know we'll sleep really good we've got 8 15 so I'll let the thermometer is kind of change my heating's kind of regular and I'm still at 35 up here about head height which is like 90 95 Fahrenheit about and then down here on the mattress, I've got 8.5, which is, there's a feature you can change from Celsius, but when I touch it, it kind of heats up. So about 48.2 Fahrenheit. Yeah, so for the question that I always get asked from my previous videos, how warm is it inside the tent? Final answer, 8.5 at the floor level and then about uh, head uh, well say like if you're standing waist height three feet high about 20 degrees and then up head height is like 30 35 all depending on how you you uh, put wood in the stove so that's it cheers <laughs> Yeah, it's a really good beer. It's not, it's an IPA and it's not too, uh, like, too strong. It's just perfect. Quebec, uh, Quebec microbrewery here. Local. Morning folks, we got three degrees about here, it was down at zero, we just got up at 7.30, 7.40, I just restoked the stove, it had died down, slept uh, super good, so we'll get some, some water on here, get some coffee going.
Beauty day. Got, we got minus 12.5 this morning. The sun's coming out right out of the the edge there of the uh, the mountain. So we're going for a hike. We're gonna go do Sassier Les Loups, the wolf uh, hike. It's supposed to be beautiful scenery. The guy at the uh, the interpretation center said it was like amazing. So it'd be perfect, perfect weather. It is 9.30, we're ready to go. Must have went down to minus 10, maybe minus 15 last night. Gotta put these snowshoes on, they're not very big so in deep snow they wouldn't be very good but on these park uh, park roads like it's usually well traveled so it's pretty tapped but having the uh, the metal metal grip underneath it helps for traction so less slippery all right we are good to go Direction of travel that way. It's almost sad to leave the the camp with the chimney smoking. Another hiker up there on the hill. Oh, it's a Five kilometers to go up to the top. It's not too bad. This forest is really nice. There's some maple trees. You can see some maple trees. Nice Eastern Canada type forest. There is some balsam fir. Like that one right there, the evergreen. There is also spruce. This one's an old Balsam fir, it's broken at the top. Spruce. Balsam fir, you'll have smooth, smoothish uh, bark with some bubbles on it, gum bubbles, resin. Spruce will be more of a scale, scale kind of bark. And then you got some beautiful yellow birch. Kind of like the paper birch, but more of a golden color, yellow, yellow birch. Betula lutea, be the old name, lutea is yellow in Latin. Um, you can see it on that one. But now it's actually called Betula alleganiensis. And that's the majority of the trees here, our yellow birch. Well, you can see kind of the mountain up there. That's the, the top of the, the hike that we're doing right over there. Don't know if you can hear the snowmobile in the back. Now talking about yellow birch, there is there is a lot of chaga that grows on yellow and white birch. And there's one 
nice specimen actually right here. I'm not gonna collect it, just gonna show you right here. Black ball right there. That one's about the size of a, uh, I don't know, like a large orange. It's not super big, but they can grow a lot bigger than that. So yeah. Another species of uh, polyporous mushrooms here on this tree. Not chaga, this one's uh, foams fomentarius. Um, and uh, chaga in Latin is Eno notus obliquus. Chaga's good medicinal medicinal mushroom for teas and whatnot. I say four. C'est pas le chalet de l'autre départ pour les loups, ça. Je pense qu'il est beaucoup plus loin, hein. Il est pas proche de la rivière de même. Non. Non. That was the first viewpoint. Made it at 10.30. And, uh... It's another two kilometers to the second viewpoint. 
So I'm gonna go check that one out and then head back down to the campsite. Just love these forests, the snow on the trees is really, really nice how it makes all these, these balls, little balls of snow. Look at that fir tree or spruce tree, it's just all covered with, with snow. That'll chill you good if it falls in your neck. Going through a balsam fir stand. Nice sheltered area. The more we approach the uh, top of the, uh, the hill or the mountain, you can see the vegetation is really changing. So there's no more big yellow birch, no more big maples. It's all balsam fir. And the way that the snow stays on them is really nice. Look at that right there. And uh, there's a nice, well, Nice viewpoint right here. You can see kilometers away. It's all balsam firs here, and then lower altitude, more of the uh, the reddish brown color. Is more of the deciduous forest and the, the darker is all evergreens. Finally made it. I say, boy. I see, boy. See, boy. I yet put them, I think. Wow. I don't see the boy.
So this is the main viewpoint from uh, Sentier des Doux, Wolf Hike. And so our tent would be located right about there. And that is the intersection of the Soto Risky and the Jacques Cartier River. And then yesterday, the three kilometers that we walked was from the uh, entrance booth or interpretive center, which is way back there. That's where we'll have to go later today to get back. So. Guys, look at this huge spruce tree. That thing's beautiful. Nice and healthy too. I'll go beside it to show you the the size. It's so nice I gotta take a video of it. Nice and straight too. Can't can't reach around it. Be a good bark for a spruce bark. Can you? No knots or anything for 12, 12, 15 feet maybe. Well guys, She's a beauty, like Steve Irwin would say. Just made it back to the uh, first viewpoint. Gonna relax a little bit, have a snack, a bit of water, and then head back down. 12.20, so we should be back around one o'clock. Gonna have our site, have a bit of a lunch, and then Leave, yeah. Hey, it's tranquil. Hey, ça va faire une autre belle prise de vue. Hey, super quiet here. All you can hear is just the the sound of the river back down. River is a really nice. Uh, like canoe, canoeing river, it's white water. So you have a series of rapids, you can do them like portage or you can uh, go down. But the rapids we can hear and it's really nice.
well for me. Okay. Down. I see that. Packing out. All our garbage. Here's our gear. We're all ready to go. This is our site. Had our tent right here went down to the the soil melted all the snow with the heat of the, the stove have our trail leads up to the fire just gonna throw a little bit of snow on there and then we're out of here it is three o'clock so not too bad took us about two hours to uh, unpack everything. So, yeah. Well, folks, that is it for the video. Just about made it to the vehicle. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. We had an awesome time. Views at the top were breathtaking, really nice. Yeah, if you want to support my channel, you guys can subscribe and uh, click the bell if you want to be notified from new videos. See you guys soon. Cheers and uh, have a good have a good day.